Okay. You started chewing, and I was like, what? what I'm chewing you? my ice pellets. <laughs> Do you have a the, tea leaf? The tea <laughs> soaks into the ice pellets, providing more opportunity for taste. This is, this is going to be very difficult. Welcome to our next edition of Food for Thought. It's the show where you get some thoughts while you get to watch us eat some food, or in this case, drink some sweet tea. I am Tyler Womble, and my guest this week is the notorious Reese J. Miller. I don't think his middle name's actually J, but I've heard people say that. Is, nope. is it your own no, name? No, no. Um, it was a nickname given to me by a treasured friend. Ah, a treasured friend. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Well, Pastor Reese, thank you so much for being on the show. Are you excited about this today? I'm, I'm very excited. I'm very, very happy to be here. I've watched the show since its inception. Um, I've been a fan for a long time, so I'm, I'm grateful to be here. I really feel lucky to be here, honestly. Well, thank you. Do you so, have a so highlight so. so far watching the show? Um, man, I, I think uh, either I, I would say two. I would say two. The first one would be you eating a ranch. Yes, that dressing. was the worst. The second would be Pastor Zeb trying to choke down <laughs> a mango habanero ha habanero wing. Yes. He, I feel like he like had some trouble with that. He was perspiring a little bit, if yes. you will. So. Glistening, um, glistening. Glistening, yeah, fair enough. So those were those were two highlights. So Awesome. Um, yeah, man. So this show is a little bit different. This time, we're actually having a little bit of a competition. We have four sweet teas okay. from okay. various restaurants. I don't know which one is which. Okay. You don't know which one is which. Only Amy Womble knows. Okay. And so each time we will drink one of these sweet teas, we will guess, is it from Chick-fil-A, Zaxby's. Okay. I forgot Zaxby's because it's very forgettable. Bojangles, okay, and Smithfields, which I ate one shot today. Okay, so all all establishments with fried chicken. Yes, fried chicken establishments. I think there's a correlation there. Maybe Probably not causation, so. but correlation. Also, you put ice in my cups. It should be noted. And I appreciate that very much. Yes, Pastor, I love ice. Pastor Reese always orders his drinks with extra ice. So extra ice. I'm man. I aim to please. I will sacrifice the space for every sip to be ice cold. Very good. That's my. Uh, um, my good. So we got our question first, and then we're okay. going to jump in to the teas. Your first question, Pastor Reese, is what's something in this season that has given you joy or hope? I think it's been really easy to focus on things that have given us some negative mm -hmm. uh, stuff to deal with. But what's been something during this season that's given you joy or hope? Yeah, okay. So I really like this question because of what you just mentioned. Like, And I'm, I'm really guilty of... Maybe I see that like one of my favorite, you know, events has been canceled or sports, you know, have been moved from here to here. And I, and I, and I, I get into this habit of saying, man, like what, you know, what is this going to take away from me next? Which is a super selfish like way to think about things. So I think, I think like asking where's the joy coming from is, is great. And for me, I mean, I, I think for me personally, like uh, what I, what, where I've experienced joy in this season is more time with my wife. Um, I know your wife has been working from home. Like my wife has been working from home. My wife not might not would say that she's experienced joy with more time uh, with me. No, I'm just kidding. But like I've gotten more time with her to, to hang out and to do things, um, and it's been great. You know, so man, she is a huge source of joy in my life. And we have started playing Bananagrams. Oh, do you nice. know the game Bananagrams? It's, it's Scrabble S. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like Scrabble. And we play that, and we've been playing like almost every night. We'll play like a couple of rounds of Bananagrams, and then she loves Mario Kart Double Dash. So I've been training her a little bit and that, giving her some pointers. Um, but man, like time with her has been something that has brought me so much joy. And I mean, I I don't know if I would have gotten this much time with her or not if it hadn't been for the past like few months. So there are definitely like things that are hard about it. Um, but that would be an area where I've really, really had some joy um, in that regard. Cool. So, That's awesome. Yeah, man. And I think it's important to, like, we're going to talk later about some questions about how we can love people like Jesus that yeah. we are around. Because I think it, we feel like, oh, I can't go serve the homeless at downtown Raleigh right yeah. now. Or I can't, like, go on a mission trip. But the people that we're around, them, like, that we were around a lot, or we're around even more now. Yeah. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. But, okay. man, that's great. Also, yeah, yeah. if you've been praying for humility mm -hmm. in this season, uh, challenge Pastor Reese to a game of Double Dash. Mm -hmm. um, you will, I mean, you can basically have a head start. I bet he could give sure. you a lap. and you're Sure, you're take lose. a lap. Take so, a lap. 
yeah. Baby Park, maybe not. But everything no, else. No, I will not. I will not race you at Baby Park. You're not trying to race me on Baby Park. <laughs> it's a sham. That's right. right. That's right. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, let's let's try our first. Okay. Tape. Okay. Go, go on the left. I All right. That is number this one. This one right here. Number I'm gonna one. smell mine first. Like a Somali A of T. Well, I don't, I don't know if like you can smell the environment of the restaurant on the cup. Oh, which fried uh, oil they use, perhaps? Um. Okay. Are we doing this? Yeah. All right. Let's yep. go. All right. Let's go. Here we go. Okay. You started chewing, and I was like, what? what I'm chewing my have? ice pellets. Do you have a the, tea leaf? The tea <laughs> soaks into the ice pellets, providing more opportunity for taste. This is this is going to be very difficult. I, should, ah, I tried to, like, swirl it around. That was not a good idea. I mean, this it's stuck is, in my throat now. This is really stinking <laughs> tough. All right, we're getting started. What is wrong with I, you? I put some in, and I swirled it around. Okay, that's very, it's very sugary. Yeah, yeah, not it's very sweet. Thing. I'm gonna go. That is, that is Chick Fil A. I'm going Chick Fil A. Yeah, I, I feel most comfortable there. Chick Fil A and Smithfields, I feel like taste similar. It's so refreshing. But this is this is really sweet, and Chick Fil A sweet tea is usually pretty sweet. Yeah. I'm, I'll, I'll go, I'm gonna go Chick Fil A as well. I think right. That's where it's at. All right. Our results have been uh, sent to us. We, were we, we wrong? We were wrong. That was Zaxby's. Okay. Which I'm fine not knowing because I, the less I go there, the better. Floppy oh. toast, no thanks. <laughs> definitely Zaxby's. That's was, definitely Zaxby's. I was not ready for that. Man. What is your order at Zaxby's? I don't even know how to get there. So I go there with Rachel. Okay. And they have a two-person pack where you can get two meals. So it's like you can get your chicken tenders, fries, and Texas toast. You can get your t t chicken t tenders. T Texas toast. It's real Texas toast <laughs> from Texas. <laughs> Tossed in any sauce, which I get it in the tongue torch sauce. Buffalo Rachel loves it too. Okay. And that's what we get. So we get like the two person party pack, except it's just me and Rachel. All right, it's so good though. That's fine. But you don't like buffalo sauce, like none no, of that. So like, no. get, it's get lost on you. That's it's fine. lost on you. I'll give it a shot. Maybe we'll have it on uh, sometime here. Okay. Okay. Not today. Next question. Yes, sir. Um, I'm ready. So this is our second time answer, asking this question. Okay. And it's one that I think is really helpful in this season because okay. I think we have a chance to do this more. Uh, what is a book recommendation you have for our mm. students? Well, as you know, Tyler, I've read a lot of books. A lot of books. Not really. Um, a lot man, of Shel Silverstein. Yes. A lot of uh, short poems work from a uh, Seuss, Dr. Seuss. Yes. Um, man, uh, so I would say a book that has stuck with me for a while and has brought me a lot of encouragement is a book called The Burden is Light. The Burden is Light. By John Tyson. Uh, John Tyson is a pastor in New York. And I like um, when I, I, I like trying to read books from people that live in like different places than I do, obviously. And I mean, New York is still in America, but entirely different like culture there. Yeah. Um, but man, the book spoke a lot to me because, you know, as I was in high school and college, I struggled a lot with what other people thought of me and comparing myself. Um, and really this book really encourages me because it's all about realizing who God says you are and listening to that as opposed to listening to, hey, this is what the world says that you are. This is what the world says that you have to do. And he has this really cool concept in the book that he calls like the reverse economy of the kingdom of God. So like, you know, earth's kingdom is like, how much can you obtain? Like success yeah. is like the measure. But man, and and, uh, and you you kind of already already hit on this as well. But like, man, success and in, in, in the economy of God is found in living like Jesus mm -hmm. and trying to to learn how Jesus lived and, and to to live His way. So, man, it, it talks about just the danger of comparison and comparing yourself to other people and realizing you know that you need to find your identity in what God's Word um, tells you that you are, and less in what people you know try to tell you what you are. So. The burden is like, yeah, really, really encouraging to me. Cool. That's awesome. I haven't read that, so I would mm -hmm. love to check it out. If that's something you're interested in, um, comment on this on Instagram or DM us, and we'd love to figure out a way for uh, you to have a chance to read that. You can have one. my copy. I, you, I mean, I will, you, I will give you my copy. If it you'd it like might have some copy. chew marks on it. It might. In the corners. But it no, might. Okay. No, that is, that is very, it's very <laughs> from true. Maggie, not that's from right. Maggie. No, I, I stopped chewing on books about a couple years ago. So Lost. The last, uh, taste exactly. Okay. Exactly. Um, well, let's taste this. Okay, number instead. the second one. Round two. All right, I'm ready. Man, so we know that Zaxby's is out of it. Wait, it does smell different. 
It smells cleaner, more purified. We know that Zaxby's is out of this contest. Yes, Zaxby's is out. So this is either Bojangles, Smithfields, or Chick-fil-A. That is correct. We should be able to get this right. All right, let's go. Whoa. Okay. That tastes different than that. Which is weird because yep. they look exactly the same. All right, for me, that's not Bojangles. No, I'm... I think my guess is, I think, hold on. It's either Chick-fil-A or Smithfields. It doesn't. I'm going, I'm, 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 I feel, I feel. It lacks the hardiness of a Bojangles. Here's what I'll say. I feel 96% confident in this. Okay. Smithfields. This is, this is Smithfields Sweet Tea. I'll go Chick-fil-A. I'll go Chick-fil-A. I think this is Smithfields Sweet Tea. All right. The, um, the surveys are coming back live stream. Actually, Reese, I just thought about something. We crunched the numbers. If we keep doing it this way, the, by the fourth one, we're going to, no matter what, yep, we'll get that's it that's right. true. So let's wait. Let's wait on what we think it is. We'll keep it. We'll keep track of it, and let's just move on. That way, we have a fair shot at being the, uh, the sweet tea champion. I really think this is Smithfields. Okay. I, I'm feeling less and I was picturing it with small little ice pellets, oh. but I'm going to stick to my guns. Chick-fil-A. Okay. Okay. Are you ready for your next question? No. Both of those restaurants have small ice pellets, just so you know. Chick-fil-A does? Yes. Wait. Okay. Dude, I'm the I'm the ice I'm the ice guy. <laughs> the ice king. They call they call me uh, the ice guy. The ice king. What's the what's what's Ben Wyatt's um Uh Ice, ice Town. Ice Town. Ice Town. Ice Town. That's right. It's the ice clown. That's so, right. All right. That's right. Anyway. Here okay. we go. So what we've been talking about um, kind of leads into this is where I want to spend the rest of our time is okay. it's easy for us, I think, to neglect loving people like Jesus in this time because mm -hmm. we're just not around people. We're not seeing them face to face. Um, so what would you say are some ways that we can love people like Jesus right now? Because when we read the scriptures, like he's healing people, he's ministering, he's teaching, and that's yeah. all the normal ways we do that aren't really happening. So how can we love people like Jesus right now? What's some ways we can do that? Man, so... This and, and I mean, this is a tough one. I think because it's it's funny because like, I'll like I'll I'll speak to this and answer this question and say that I'm really bad like at, at this and this is a really hard time to love people like Jesus. I feel like it's like really easy to love people like Jesus when things are going like our way. Yeah. But right now, like man, I think all of us are, are struggling with some things maybe and maybe we have disagreements with other people and things like that. So I think if we, if we like look at the way that Jesus lived and like look at his ministry, there's like a couple of words that like pop out to me. One um, is patience. It's like having patience with other, other people. And man, like we can't, we can't, we can't be patient like on our own. So like leaning on God to just saying, God, like, man, just give me some patience today. Another one is, is compassion. It's just like having compassion for other people. But the third one, I think, um, you know, and I was talking to, to Rachel about this yesterday. It was like, is the word empathy or even like sympathy. Yeah. And I, I feel like right now, this is a time where when we do get to like talk to people, right? Because maybe we're not talking to people as much right now. Like we can't wait to say, hey, here's what I think about this. Yeah. Like I, I know that you're struggling with something right now, but look, what I have to say is more important. Or what I think about this is the right way. Or, or what I'm saying is the best thing. But man, really, I think that we could do good by looking at the life of Jesus and looking at how when Jesus interacted with people, man, Jesus wasn't just constantly talking and pushing like, you know, hit like his thing. Like he was looking to, to meet people where they were and, and, and talking to them in a way that they would understand um, and, and showing empathy for them and their situation. So maybe just like when we have conversations with people and when we think about, you know, talking with other people, our questions are more of like, hey, like what, when you say this, like, what do you mean? Like help, like like show me where you're coming from, or uh, I mean, just asking someone like, "Hey, how's your family doing? Like, how are you doing with this whole thing? Like, what you know, like what is your what does your walk with Jesus look like?" And I think focusing more on like being compassionate and being patient with people, because um, understanding that man, maybe we're frustrated because we're at home all the time, so is everyone else, yeah. you know, and so. Just, just working in a way that, that shows empathy because, man, like God's word tells us like John 13, right, that people will know we're Christ followers by how we love other people and how we treat other people like Jesus. And I think a lot of times we see like being like Jesus is this like tall, you know, just unattainable, like huge thing that we have to like go out and chase when really it's just in the little things that we're doing every day, 
man, like how can I live my life in a way like that Jesus would, you know? Knowing that Jesus lived perfectly so that we don't have to, but we still have a responsibility to try to live like him. So I don't, I don't know if that makes any sense, but yeah. that's like where I'm, where yeah. I'm coming from. Yeah, what do you great. think? Like patience, compathy. Patience, empathy. compassion, empathy. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Yeah. And yeah. I can be so guilty, particularly in this season, of reading somebody or hearing somebody. And mm-hmm. as I'm doing that, already starting to formulate like what I think, how I can respond, how I can show that I know what I'm talking about or how to make them like me. And, and I really don't listen well because all I'm doing is trying to frame my response. And so yeah. I, I love that you mentioned, like, maybe we need to focus more on listening than just our response. Definitely, uh, yeah. And I think, too, like, I mean, uh, I think a, a huge thing in this, I was listening to a sermon, to, like, earlier today, and the, the pastor was talking about how, like, we've got to be able to get to a point where it's okay for me and you to disagree with each other. Yeah. Like, we, like we can have a difference of opinion but our like-mindedness like needs to stay the same, right? That I, that I like that you and I are brothers in, in Jesus that might have disagreements, but at the end of the day, like our identity is found not in our opinion, right? It's found in man that we're we're children of God and we're brothers, you know. So yeah. it's like just like trying to see things through through that lens and. And if me and you can do that, there are a lot of other people that will have less trouble. It's true. <laughs> absolutely. No, you are absolutely right. So Good. Uh, great, great thoughts there. Um, number three, let's give it a shot. Okay. You really like number two because you have drank pretty Dude, much. Dude, number two, and, and coming into this, I'd probably say, and I'm, I'm going to really, really eat this if I'm wrong, but, like, I think Smithfields would be my favorite tea out of these four coming into this. Yeah. So, Maybe your taste I, buds I hope don't this lie. is Smithfields. Yeah. I don't, I agree. I don't think it was Bojangles. It was not Bojangles. So, if I missed that one, we have. Would you issues. be able to tell the Bojangles tea by the hue by the hue of the the color? This of the one tea? appears slightly darker, so I'm interested to see what the taste. Okay, is. let's see what we got. That's Bojangles. Okay, yeah, I think so too. Yeah. And, and, okay, so you, you crush that. Now, uh, something, uh, do you notice a specific kind of like taste towards the end after, of the... I was okay. going to say, it's okay. the aftertaste. Yeah. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but that is Bojangles. Yeah, that's definitely Bojangles. Oh, that was so good. I'm going to be jittery the rest of the time because of that caffeine, but that is Bojangles. It, I, can, I feel like I'm, 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 I'm chasing down a Chicken Supreme... With the, with what I'm drinking, right I now. think they put just a little bit of Cajun seasoning in there, just, the, a, just a touch. Did, did the did the people, did the very good people out there watching know about your like Bojangles problem? I, probably because I've mentioned it on the okay. show, but that is that is my love language. Um, there is nothing like a three piece supreme from Howie sixty four because they normally give you an extra tender, and then when the fries are done just right mm. with some ketchup. And the biscuit's not too burnt. Mm-hmm. It's not from Highway 55. With grape jelly. Oh, with some grape jelly. That That is living. Now, I can honestly say I don't think I've ever met another human being that likes Bojangles as much as you do. Yeah. Now, I've had to cut it a little, so it even matters sure. even more when sure. I have it. Yeah, yeah. But. Delicious. Do you have a, Do you have an order that's like, this is my number one order? Is uh, it the Supreme? Is it? I have an order prior to 11 a.m. and an order after 11 a.m. Okay. Prior to 11 Bacon and egg biscuit combo, French fries, sweet tea, mm. four fifty four, is the cost of that. Um, then okay. after eleven a.m. That signifies the problem when you know <laughs> the cost. Now, not only the menu cost, the tax. Yes, and then post that is the three piece supreme combo, French fries, sweet tea. Okay. No honey mustard. Get that out of here. Yep. Ketchup, grape jelly. Wow. Okay. Well. That one has just recently increased. I think that one is at. Okay. Yeah, I really don't, really don't care, really don't care. Real, okay. Yeah, th- that's great. Tom. You're, you're that's straight great. for the next question. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just, I'm always slightly alarmed when you start going off about Bojangles. Sorry, I'll, I'll tone it back. It's okay. It's okay. Everyone's got. We'll go off about theology instead. How about that? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Let's do that. You know, food for theology. <laughs> food for theology. Uh, that'll be our like, not, not knock off. Spin-off. 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 Okay. okay. Now we're, we're creating an entire universe of this now. Anyway, okay. next question. I'm ready. So I don't personally, I've, I personally struggle with this question as a student in student ministry, so I thought we'd bring it up. Ooh. Um, I, I always had a really hard time seeing my, my home, like where I was living as a middle and high school student, as my mission field. And so I'm thinking back, if I had gone through Corona verse 
instead of Spider Verse, Chrome Verse. Mm -hmm. um, I would have really struggled with loving my family well, like Jesus during yeah. this season, because I would be stuck with them. Like, my parents used to punish me by, like, saying I couldn't go to church because that was where I went to, like, get away from, like, being a good sibling, being a good son, doing mm -hmm. what God had called me to do there. Um, and so, like, how do we see our family and our home as the mission field right now? And what's some, what are some ways that we can love like Jesus with our siblings and our parents or grandparents? Like, wherever our home life is right now, how can we take advantage of that instead of, like, wanting to strangle our little brother. Everywhere. Yeah. So, man, I, I appreciate you noting that you, like, struggle with this. I think this is something I struggle with as well. I have two younger sisters. Um, one of them is 24, and the other one is 20. So I'm 27, so they're fairly close, like, to my age. So we, you know, we argued a lot. We got in a lot of, you know, really silly uh, debates and discussions. Um, and, man, it is really, really hard. Um, but, man, if we look at Scripture... Like, it's crazy how much importance and emphasis that the Bible puts on our family. And I think, like, one thing that is helpful to me is, like, when, when I, you know, looking back now, I handled when I would get frustrated poorly. But there were some times where I kind of started to realize, okay, like, these people, like, in my house, like, they're not just, like, random people that are annoying me that I've got to, you know, my, my mindset is, like, let me just get through another day with these people, Right. My, the, the people that are in my house, my house are people that God has intentionally placed like into my life yeah. and has given me a responsibility to love. And so like, what does that responsibility, you know, look like? And man, like the, I, I think like one of my main like mantras is like a kid was like, all right, if one of my sisters does this to me, then it justifies me doing this like yeah. right back, you know? This is the response. Yeah, re justified. repay evil with evil, yeah. you know? But man, we look at scripture and, and God's word says, do not repay evil with evil, right? Repay evil with good, repay good with good. So if we try to focus and say, hey, like my response, man, I'm, I'm always going to try to repay whatever I get with good. Understanding that there are imperfect people, imperfect broken people, just like myself in my house that I'm living with, you know that are that are doing these things. I think like that. You know that's something that's been that's been helpful to me. On a practical level, um, man, like one thing that is that has really stood out to me, and I think you do this really well, is take like this week, take like a couple of minutes and go find one of your siblings or one of your you know your parents or your grandparents or whoever's in your house and ask them like two or three questions about something that you know that they like. Even if you do not care anything about what it is that they like, right? Like, it, I mean, you're, you might have a sibling that is obsessed with, like, this video game. Just, like, ask them a couple of questions about things that you know that they like. Man, you do that with me. And what that makes me feel is, man, like, Tyler wants to know me. He wants to know th about things that I like. And I feel important and valued. And so my response is, like, hey, like, this is really, really cool of you. So, like... Take the initiative and, like, have a conversation. Ask your parents about, like, what they do at their job, right? Like, I, for a long time, I had no idea what my dad did. And I still don't really know a whole lot about, like, what my dad does at work. But, textiles, um, right? Yeah, something with textiles, exactly. But <laughs> just, like, doing some, some, a couple of practical things like that. Just, like, slowing down and having a conversation. Yeah. Like, putting your phone down for 15 minutes and talking to one of your parents. Like, your parents are going to are gonna love that. And they're going to, man, they're going to treasure that. So, I, I look back on... The time in my home and, and sometimes I look back like sadly and I think man I had so much time with these people and I feel like I wasted a lot of it because my whole mantra was like how do I get out of here right like like when can I move like where can I go hang out with friends and when really these are people that God has put into my life that he's given me a responsibility to love and to care for yeah. um, plus like man thinking about how much like our parents and grandparents do to like provide for us Pretty awesome. Dude, I wouldn't have said that any different. I felt like we got a little bit of preacher East right there. Yeah. And we're better for it. So let's drink our last okay. tea. Okay. And see what we got. I don't know. That might be Smithfield. This is Chick fil A. <sighs> no, I think it's Smithfield's. That's watered down now with your ice to uh, tea ratio. That's Smithfield's. I don't know. Wait, did you just agree with me or disagree? This is Chick fil A. Which, that's what I said, right? No, not? you said I'm, this I'm was confused. Smithfield's. They definitely, those are this the This is, I think this is Smithfield's. This is, I think this is Chick fil A. 
what we're drinking right now. Okay. And I went Chick Fil A Smith. Mm -hmm. I'm going Smith Rolls. Got to stick to my guns. That's Chick Fil A. Okay. I'm confused now, but we'll we'll go with it. So this was Zaxby's, which we got wrong. Zaxby's. I said Smithfield's at number two. I said Chick Fil A. We both said Bojangles. Bojangles. And then we're switched on this one. We're switched. Okay, okay, so these okay. this is where the there are two points up for grabs. Gotcha. Well, let's knock out our last question, then we can see who let's is, do it. Who's the champ? Let's do um, it. So I, I would also say there's a lot of people struggling right now. Mm. Like we can see it Instagram, like social media. Yeah. We can see it, like, um, and how in our text threads, like all over the place. Like people are struggling, and so man, just really quick, what's like one very practical thing anybody could do to love someone who's hurting or struggling like Jesus would in this season? Mm. Like what's one thing we could do? Well, man, I mean, obviously like outside of like, you know, asking, hey, like how can, how can I pray for you? Like something like that. Man, I think something like, you know, something else maybe. I mean, man, like go get them like one of their favorite candies or something. Write them a little like note. Go take it and drop it off at their house. Put it in their mailbox or something. Get your parents to drive you. I'm sure your parents would take you out to do something like that. Um, and if you have that happen to you, like go and do it for someone else, you know? So maybe just like get out of the house a little bit, write a little note, get someone their favorite candy, drop it off, man, like that. I think that would mean like a lot to people. Um, yeah. Just to say, hey, I'm here for you. I love you. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because it, what it's not saying is, hey, I like care about you $2.50 worth. Exactly. What it's saying is like, I care enough that I'm thinking about you. Like, yeah. I, I see you. I see your hurt. I see your pain. And I want you to know you're not alone. Yeah, and, yeah. And so how cool that we can express all of that through, like, a Hershey's Kiss. Although, yeah. Well, that might melt. But, yeah, it might melt, but, but that's some okay. Some sour Skittles, for example. You, I, I felt like you would bring up a sour candy. Some sour, it's, some, like, candy candy things. Yes. But, yeah, and I think, I think too, like, that just, you know, I think that goes a long way. Yeah. That you're like, hey, like, I'm thinking about you more than a text, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, man. Great yeah. easy way. Hey, knock that out this week. I think that's a great idea um, for us. So let us get our... Results here. Okay. So, we, so just to clarify, I went Zaxby's, Chick Fil A, okay. Bojangles, Smithfields, and I got Zaxby's wrong. So. We, I did too. Yeah. So we just flip flopped on the two and the four. Yes. So I'm going to check our results. Uh, it looks like number two was Smithfields. Mm. So I got mm. that wrong. Mm. Mm. I should have known that the the ice would make a difference. Uh huh. I was foiled again. Number three though, I. We, I upheld the crown of all things. Okay. I don't want to need to get a have a because we got Bojangles for number three. And then number four was Chick-fil-A. So I missed these two. I was one for four. I shot 25%, yeah. which uh, is not much like Jimmy Butler's uh, line not mm -hmm. too long ago. Um, Reese, however, you went. I went three for four. Three I for missed Zach's. I feel like I should have gotten it, um, but I missed it. So There you go. It's well. Okay. Maybe if you want to check this out, uh, give it your own uh, yeah. chance to see how you are with your T's. Do a taste test. Of Apex. Yeah, exactly. But most importantly, thanks for checking this out. Hey, let's love people well in this season. I think it's hard to do that, but I think that matters so much. And I think that's going to look like we were talking about how Jesus' economy is different. Mm -hmm. How we love people in this season will not look like the rest of the world. And Definitely. that matters. Definitely. So, Pastor Reese, thanks for joining us. We will catch you Pleasure. next time.